we have been discussing some mcqs based on ugc net english syllabus in this process today in this video we will try to discuss more questions related to english literature and research and teaching aptitude without any delay let's begin the discussion of first question it says which of the following is the proper sequence for writing a dissertation so when you will go for mphil though nowadays it has been abolished but for phd it has been there so if you want to write a phd dissertation uh, then or not only phd uh, in some not some uh, according to new education policy uh, the degree it has been now uh, it has been increased to four years earlier it was three years so at the uh, last year that year will be a year of dissertation so there too you have to write but since you are not studying graduation so no point of talking about that but this i have told you some basic information so let's try to find out the uh, proper sequence for writing a dissertation number a saying write a preliminary draft number b saying develop a thesis statement number c saying state your purpose in writing a paper number d saying make an outline to help you keep to your plan as you write which one will be correct options are a b c d c b d a d a b c b d a c which one will be correct questions are uh, qu questions like this are often asked that's why you must be prepared to answer and face so correct answer will be b that means first c will come you you have to first state your purpose in writing a paper then b develop a thesis statement then d then you have to make an outline to help you keep to your plan as you write and then a you have to write a preliminary draft so this is the fundamental way okay to write a dissertation Uh, then we have next question it says which of the following belongs to the category of good research ethics which of the following belongs to the category of good research ethics number a saying publishing the same paper in two research journals without telling the editors so this is not a good thing to do second is saying conducting a review of the literature that acknowledges the contributions of other people in the relevant field so whether it is correct or not you will know then including a colleague as an author on a research paper in return for a favor even though the colleague did not make a serious contribution to the paper number d saying copying text from published sources without giving credit to those who produce the sources correct answer will be number b that means conducting a review of literature that acknowledges the contributions of other people in the relevant field so this is a good research ethic practice got it the number 3 we have proquest proquest it is a what book text database search engine online journal so correct answer is proquest is a b that is text database got it it's a tax database next question we have is which of the following best describes the phrase data abuse protocols in literary research number 1 plagiarism number 2 translating without permission number d non payment of copyright dues number 4 Quoting without acknowledgement. Options are one and two are correct. One, two, and three are correct. One, two, and three are incorrect. One, four are correct. 
and the rest are incorrect so here we ha we have seen that one will be correct for sure okay so let's find out find out the answer of number four correct answer will be b that means one two and three are correct plagiarism translating without permission non-payment of copyright dues this will be called as data abuse protocols in literary research you must know about it and you must practice it practice it in your own research journey <clears throat> next question we have is number five it says the census carried out by the government of india is an example of what you all know uh, after every decade government of india uh, carries out census so now we have to find out what is that census will be called exploratory research casual research descriptive research hermeneutic research so number c is the correct answer descriptive research it is the correct answer descriptive research is the correct answer next question we have is identify the incorrect statement we have to find out the incorrect statement it says a hypothesis is made on the basis of limited evidence as a starting point for future investigations number b a hypothesis is a basis for reasoning without any assumption of its truth a hypothesis is a proposed explanation for a phenomenon number d scientific hypothesis is a scientific theory so what is the correct answer of six correct answer of six is d that is scientific hypothesis is a scientific theory okay scientific hypothesis is a scientific theory this is the incorrect statement all others are correct like a hypothesis is made on the basis of limited evidence as a starting point for future investigations a hypothesis is a basis for re reasoning without any assumption of its truth and a hypothesis is a proposed explanation for a phenomenon these are all are correct but this thing is not correct that is the scientific hypothesis is a scientific theory it's wrong number seven a work can become modern only if it is first postponed a work can become modern only if it is first postmodern this line is taken from answering the question what is the postmodern g frankoy leotard the death of the author by roland barthes what is an author by michel foucault postmodernism or the cultural logic of late capitalism by frederick jameson these all writers these all uh, books are important that's why you have to know about them in detail so do your own research related to it so what will be the correct answer of seven correct answer is a that means answering the question what is the postmodern g franz franzkois leotard okay then we have uh, number eight it says which of the following novelist does not show fictionality of the text which of the following novelist does not show fictionality of the text john fowles kurt von gut lauren stern george meredith options are like this so the question is which of the following the novel novelist does not show fictionality of the text correct answer is d that is george meredith george meredith he was the novelist who did not show fictionality of the text next which of the following american novels was used by edward said to illustrate american imperialism which of the following american novels was used by edward said to illustrate american imperialism you must have heard his name edward said if you haven't then you should right now 
Options are the last of the Mohicans, the old man and the sea, beloved Moby Dick. All are very important. Know about it. 9. Correct answer is D. That is Moby Dick. Okay. True Moby Dick. True Moby Dick. Uh, Edward Said has illustrated American imperialism. Next question is number 10. It says, who links literary genres to seasons who links literary genres to seasons northrop fry richard chase maud bodkin francis ferguson correct answer is northrop fry okay he has linked literary genres to seasons number 11 it says which of the following is not a book of uh, not a book by stephen Greenblatt which of the book is not a book sorry which of the following is not a book by Stephen Greenblatt will in the world Hamlet in purgatory beginnings marvelous possessions 11 uh, correct answer is C that is beginnings C beginnings so beginning is the book which is not written by Stephen Greenblatt. Number 12, it says, Camera Lucida. Camera Lucida. It is a book by whom? Roland Barthes, John Berger, Laura Mulvey, Jax Derrida. Number A is the correct answer. Roland Barthes. So that's why I'm saying you must know about Roland Barthes. You have to know. Number 13. Number 13, it says, It is about time that criticism and philosophy acknowledge the disappearance, disappearance or the death of the author. Which critics is credited with the statement? Let me repeat it. It is about time that criticism and philosophy acknowledge the disappearance or the death of the author. Which critic is credited with the statement? Jax Laka, Michel Foucault, Harold Bloom, Jax Derrida. Correct answer is number B, that is Mike Michel Foucault. Michel Foucault was the person who uh, said it, it is about time that criticism and philosophy acknowledge the disappearance or the death of the author. Number 14. Match the writers in list 1 with their ideas in list 2. So we have two lists. In list 1 we have writers. In list 2 we have theories. Raymond Williams, J. L. Austin, Mi uh, Michel Foucault, Michael Bakhtin. Speech Act Theory, Dialogism, Dialogism, Marxism, post structuralism So, correct options are like this. Correct option will be number B, that means A3. Raymond Williams, post structuralism. 2 1. JL Austin, Speech Act Theory. 3 4. Michel Foucault, post structural. Uh, wait, wait. I did a mistake. It was 1 3. R Raymond Williams is related to not post structuralism, he was related to Marxism. Then 2 1 J. L. Austin, it is related to speech sect theory. 3 4 Michel Foucault, post structuralism. And then 4 2 Michael Bakhtin, dialogism. Okay. Next, next question. Number 15. It is saying bracketing is a term used in phenomenological criticism to describe what? meeting of the writer's world and the reader's world meeting of the writer's world and the publisher's world meeting of the writer's language and the re reader's language meeting of the writer's world and the words of the writer's inner self so what is the correct answer of the term called bracketing correct answer will be number a that there is meeting the writer's world and the reader's world meeting the writer's world and the reader's wall so this is called bracketing
next question we have is in which of the book in which of her book books does julia kristeva introduce the idea of the abject a b j c t powers of horror desire in language revolution in poetic language the abject and the horrible so correct answer is a that is powers of horror okay so in this book julia kristeva has introduced the idea of the abject number 17 it says new historicism was fundamentally influenced by what marx henry lefavre derrida fuko correct answer is fuko okay new historicism was fundamentally influenced by fuko fuko is the correct answer number 18 it says with which theoretical movement can one associate the idea that a work of art should ideally be marked by distancing and est- estrangement rather than by cohesion and progression post colonialism the frankfurt school queer theory post feminism correct answer will be the frankfurt school if you don't know about it what is frankfurt school then you must know please go through it number 19 which of the following books offer offers an argument diametrically opposed to ts eliot's tradition and the individual talent which of the following books offers an ar- argument diametrically opposed to ts eliot's tra- tradition and the individual talent geoffrey hartman saving the text literature derrida philosophy harold bloom the anxiety of influence Paul Deman blindness and insight Mikhail Bakhtin the dialogic imagination so correct answer of the 19 number will be B Harold Bloom the anxiety of influence got it next question we have is number 20 it says longinus on the sublime begins with an attack on the incompleteness of the work of a greek rhetorician longinus on the sublime begins with an attack on the incompleteness of the work of a greek rhetorician called uh, anaximenes demosthenes isocrates cassilis cassilis on the sub- sublime number 20 correct answer will be cassilius this is the correct answer Cassilius Likewise 2901 which of the following 19th century literators was the strongest proponent of the high culture mass culture dichotomy that was finally erased by postmodernism I will repeat the question which of the following 19th century 19th century literators was the strongest proponent of the high culture mass culture dichotomy that was finally erased by postmodernism it's a very important question you must know about it do your own research thomas carlyle john ruskin matthew arnold cardinal newman 21 number c is the correct answer that is matthew arnold okay matthew arnold he has done that uh 22 aristotle in his poetics mentions three painters one of whom represent characters above the average identify the painter po poshenias polygnotus Dionysius Apollodorus what will be the correct answer Aristotle in his poetics mentions three painters one of whom represents characters above the average so we have to find out the painter correct answer will be B Polygnotus Polygnotus so after going through all these questions 
you must have now idea what kind of questions can and may ask so your study direction should go there then only you can qualify you have to make sure that you must know how to do your preparation because same to same questions will never come number 23 it says in tradition and the individual talent ts eliot speaks about about the working of the poet's mind in terms of which of the following modalities natural selection a chemical reaction a flowing river a cornucopia correct answer is b that is a chemical reaction okay in tradition and individual talent ts eliot speaks about the working of the poet's mind in terms of net uh, a chemical reaction so he, he so he believes that ts eliot believed that through a chemical reaction uh poet's mind work works number 24 it says horace in ars poetica states poets have ever had equal authority for attempting anything but not to such a degree choose the correct explanation of horace's statement it's a famous work by horace you must read so here horace defends creative liberty horace defends creative imagination horace defends poetic authority horace initiates a debate on decorum and poetic license correct answer is number d that is horace initiates a debate on the uh, on decorum and poetic license okay wait we have some problem here okay now it's done next question is 25 in number 25 the question is like this it says the fugitives and the agrarians they are linked to what new criticism at yale university new criticism at uh, vanderbilt university chicago aristotelians and new criticism new historicism at berkeley the fugitives and the agrarians did they are linked to what correct answer will be number 25 new criticism at vanderbilt university vanderbilt next question number 26 it says mark scorer in his technique as discovery considers art as different from life because art carries the stamp of what a objectivity universality dramatization and evaluation b impersonality technique discovery and evaluation c objectivity impersonality resonance and dramatization d objectivity paradox irony and displacement so which options which option will be correct correct option is a that is first objectivity will come then university uh, universality then dramatization and then evaluation so mark scorer in his technique as discovery he has con- considered art as different from the life because art carries this stamp number 27 it says in his poetics aristotle says that tragedies of most of the moderns are characterless what does aristotle mean by character in his poetics so you must have seen many questions are asked related to aristotle's poetics therefore without having adequate knowledge about poetics if you appear then your chance of passing is very low so do what you should do in his poetics aristotle says the tragedies of most of the moderns are characterless what does aristotle mean by character a neutrality of dramatic character b character with a moral purpose c character below the average 
the characters devoid of virtue correct address b that is character with a moral purpose character with a moral purpose <coughs> then we will go to uh, our next question it says which of these is not a contemporary theory of popular culture which of these is not a contemporary theory of popular culture thing theory string theory rubbish theory actor network theory all theory are important uh, please go through it 28 so correct answer is b that is string theory this is not rel related to a contemporary theory of popular culture string theory uh, number 29 it says longinus thinks that sublime consists in a certain loftiness and excellence of language Longinian excellence of language refers to what? Let me repeat it. Longinus thinks that the sublime consists in a certain loftiness and excellence of language. Longinian excellence of language refers to what? Judgment and reason, rhetorical skill in invention, appropriateness of language, structural craftsmanship. Correct answer will be number C that is appropriateness of la language. So he has referred uh, excellence of language to it got it appropriateness of language number c okay similarly our next question our next question is number 30 it says the following quotation is from the prologue of a play okay so this quotation is a prologue of a play so uh, i would like to say one thing here that uh, whenever you read a play whenever always try to find out what what is the subtitle of that play when this play was written and what is the genre of that play okay and then what is the prologue and epilogue of that play so this can be an external uh, elements but these are also important many questions are formed on the basis of this but this is also an example of that the following quotation is from the prologue of a play so it says pray would you know the reason why i am crying the comic muse long sick is now a dying and if she goes my tears will never stop identify the play so we have to identify the play uh, from which play this prologue is taken. A is saying uh, Sheridan's rivals, Goldsmith's she stoops to conquer, uh, Atrage is the man of mode, Congreves the country wife. Correct answer is B, that is Goldsmith's she stoops to conquer. So these all plays, these are very significant. If you have no idea about the summary, about the writer, about the plot about the character then you must search about it number 31 it says under which of the following disciplines would a study of styles of dressing be placed under which of the following disciplines would a study of styles of dressing be placed semiology symbology semiotics semantics so correct answer is a that is semiology uh, so through semiology we study uh, about styles of dressing number 32 it says it says which in which language did namdev dhasal originally write in which language did nam namdev dhasal originally originally write sindhi marathi gujarati odia 32 number uh, B that is Marathi uh, from Marathi so many plays have been translated in English and those notable writers notable plays you must know number 33 it says which of the following is originally composed as a graphic novel which of the following is originally composed as a graphic novel Susan Sontag's The Volcano Lover Marzani 
ছাত্রাপিস পার্সি পলিস ই এল ডক্টর ডক্টরস রেক টাইম ইজামেল রিডস ফ্লাইট টু কানাডা অল আর ইম্পর্টেন্ট এন্ড ইফ ইউ ডোট নো হোয়াট ইজ গ্রাফিক নভেল দেন ইউ মাস্ট নো ইউ হ্যাভ টু ডু ইউর অন রিসার্চ অ্যাবাউট ইট দ্য কারেক্ট এনসার অফ থার্টি থ্রি উইল বি বি মারজানি সাত্রাপিস পার্সি পলিস নেক্সট কুয়েশন ইজ থার্টি ফোর দ্য ফিল্ম এপোকেলিপস নাও ইট ইজ এন এডেপশন অফ ওয়াট লিও টলস্তয় টলস্তয়স ওয়ার এন্ড পিস নর্মান মেলার্স দ্য নেকেড এন্ড ডেড জোসেফ হেলার্স ক্যাটস টুয়েন্টি টু জোসেফ কনরাজ হার্ট অফ ডার্কনেস দিজ অল রাইটার্স আর ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট ইউ মাস্ট নো অ্যাবাউট দেম ওয়াট দে হ্যাভ ডান এন্ড হাউ দে আর writing writings have impacted the correct answer of 34 will be number d that is joseph conner's heart of darkness then we have number 35 the two, 2000 uh, the 2016 hindi romantic film called fitur it is an exam uh, adaptation of what david copperfield Zen Iyer, Great Expectations, The Moonstone, 35. Correct answer is number C, that is Great Expectation, written by Charles Dickens. You must know about uh, the writings related to Charles Dickens. Please go through it. Number 36. The 1979 film, Junoon, it is a Hindi film. <coughs> Hindi film. It is based on what? Ruskin bonds a flight of pigeons. Anita decides fire on the mountain. Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. Charlotte Bronte's Villetti. The correct answer of 36 will be A. That is Ruskin bonds a flight of pigeons. A flight of pigeons. Ruskin bond is an uh, Indian English writer who is known for his writings in English so you must know his biography as well as his body of works number 37 37 it says which of this novelist was acknowledged by Salman Rasdi Salman Rasdi is a big name in Indian English literature especially in England or in Western Hemisphere that's why you have to know ab- about him too and he is also considered as a diasporic Indian English writer Salman Rasdi as his precursor in the use of chutnification of Indian English so he has used uh, chutnification of Indian I- English I means someone has said like that so who is that Bhavani Bhattacharya Monohar Mulankar Jeevi Desan, Desani, Tabis Khair, Khair. So correct answer is C, that is Jeevi Desani. Jeevi Desani is the person uh, who, has, who has acknowledged Salman Rasdi as his precursor in the use of chutnification of, of Indian English. Number 38, it says, Johnson's comedies mostly deal with his favorite theme of human greed. Which of the comedies listed below is an exception? Bolpone, Epicone, The Alchemist, The Case is Altered. So, correct answer? Correct answer is B. Epicone is the correct answer. Epicone. Next question we have is which of the following are characteristics of Butler English? So if you have no idea what is Butler English, then you have to know. Okay? What questions can come related to Butler English? No one knows. So do your own research. So here it is saying which of the following are characteristics of Butler English? It has an object verb, subject o- word order. Deletion of verb inflections, deletion of prepositions, the use of ing forms for par- uh, participles. 
options are A, B, C, B, C, B, C, D, A, D. So, correct answer is what? B. That is B, C. Only deletion of verb inflection and deletion of prepositions. Only these two are correct. This and this. Deletion of verb inflections and deletion of prepositions. Next question we have is number 40. It says, the first national policy and on education was adopted in the Indian Parliament in which year? So here, this question is very important. Why? Because many questions will also be asked related to the history of Indian education system policy and its uh, policy implementation. So you must know, do your own research. The first national policy on education was adopted in the Indian Parla Parliament in which year? Number 40. It is in the year 1968 and you must know that re recently a new education policy 2020 has come. Number 41. How did R.K. Narayan describe the kind of Indian English he wrote? As brown English, as toasted English, as Tending English as ING LI Ashish. Arkanaran, you must have uh, heard, that is for sure. And uh, he is known for his works like The Guide, Swami, and his friends, like that. So, what is the correct answer? For 41? Correct answer, correct answer is B. He has said that uh, Indian English he wrote is uh, as toasted English. Toasted, okay. The toasted English. Number forty-two. It says here are four aspects of Indian psyche that do not translate very easily into English. One, culturally infected thought processes. Two, language, especially idioms. Three, style or manner of speaking. Now number four, humor. So, Raja Rao mentions three of these qualities in the preface to Kantapura as being difficult to render into English. Now, we have to pick the correct combination from the options given below. 1, 2 and 4 are correct. 1, 3 and 4 are correct. 1, 2 and 3 are correct. 1, 3 and 4 are correct. So, here you must have seen that... Uh, that um, option 3 has come many, many times. So option 3 will be correct for sure, but let us try to find out the answer. 42 answer is C, that there is 1, 2 and 3 are correct. So here, uh, you must have seen here and observe here how questions are asked. Okay, here they have said like this, that here are 4 aspects of Indian psyche that do not translate very easily into English. Then they have given 4 options and now they are Man mentioning a poem with a not poem with a novel and novelist and then they are asking this look so it's a very tricky question so this kind of question you you can expect in more difficult way in future more difficult will come number 43 it says who wrote a seminar treatise on dalit aesthetic so dalit literature a, a is also noteworthy you must study about them too you can expect many questions related to dalit aesthetics so the question is who wrote a seminal uh, treatise on dalit aesthetics covering also the imagery and idioms appropriate for conveying the dalit experience arjun dangle saran kumar limbale kancha ilaya sarmila reje reje number b is the correct answer Saran Kumar Limbale. Next question we have is Which are the only two states in India that still use English as their only official la language? So this question is also important. Which are the only two states in India that still use English as their only official language. Manipur and Mizoram, Pondicherry and Sikkim, Meghalaya and Nagaland, Arunachal Pradesh and Nagaland. 
so what is the correct answer correct answer is number c and d okay meghalaya to used meghalaya and nagaland and here it is saying according to uh, the official an answer key arunachal pradesh they also use english as their official but nowadays they speak hindi to arunachal pradesh and nagaland number 45 it's a bit long question just like our uh, previous question which we have done some minutes ago here we have been given a line not one line it has so many lines it says but ah but oh thou terrible why wouldst thou rude on me thy ring world right foot rock lay lion limb against me scan with dark some devouring eyes my bruised bones perhaps this may be the sonnet written in blood about a struggle raw in its blood and bone about which hopkins wrote to robert browning in 1885 which sonnet is this felix randall pied beauty carry on comfort prospice what is the correct answer of 445 correct answer is c that is carry on comfort this is the correct answer number 46 it says match list one with list two according to the code given below list one is say uh, is saying the x t c list two we have so many lines the sun rising to his coy mistress to good mor the good morrow and options are like this i will not read all the poem line now let's find out the answer quickly the correct answer of 46 will be a b c d but all are correct here it is seen no 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 uh okay the ecstasy it is taken from no no this is the poem so the poetic line of this poem is and um, for god's sake for god's sake hold your tongue and let me love then the sun rising the sun rising will be it it will be uh, b3 three. three is the correct answer oh no 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 from sun rising actually no options are given i have not seen any lines re related to sun rising okay so this question itself is wrong so if questions are wrong then you will get the full mark you don't have to worry in net in slat too and not only in slat in all com competitive exams number 47 we have is in language learning monitor model hypothesis is attributed to what stephen crasen b f skinner jean piaget noam chomsky number is the correct answer stephen crasen according to which linguistic process did latin poem pedem become english put and latin centum changed to english hundred grimm's law berners law clages law the great vowel shift correct answer is grimm's law okay grimm's law is the correct answer number 48 According to Berners law the voiceless consonants p 
T and K changed to the voiced consonants B, D and G when they came after a stressed syllable, an unstressed syllable, a kesura, a diphthong. B, an unstressed syllable. This is the correct answer. Number 50 is, it says, so these all questions are related to ling linguistic. You have to know the basic terms, concepts related to ling linguistics. When the great vowel shift took place in English language, the vowel I and U changed to what? So see, uh, I is changed to EI and uh, U is changed to EU. Okay, this is the correct answer. match the place in list 1 with their authors in list B. List A is saying BG D M Boys, Antonio and Melida, Women Beware Women, The Revengers Tragedy, Thomas Middleton, Cyril Tornier, George Chapman, John Marston. What is the correct answer? 51. The correct answer of 51 will be A, that means Bershi the Ambush. It is related to George Chapman. B2, Antonio and Melida. It is related to Cyril Tornier. C1, Women Beware Women. It is related to Thomas Middleton. D4, The Revengers Tragedy. It is related to John Marston. Marston. All writings about these writers are very, very crucial so no about them uh, next we have is number 50 51 is done we have now is 52 which of the following sentences is not a tautology t-a-u-t-o-l-o-g-y tautology so we have to find out which sentence is not a tautology Options are like this. There is a lot of frozen ice on the road. The market was in close proximity to the bomb blast. The hotel room wasn't great, but it was adequate. Having a fitness test is a necessary requirement for the job. Tautology. So C is the correct answer. Number 53, it is the B. Uh, number 53, it says, which of the following is not correct? Syllable is a part of word which generally has only one vowel sound. Syllable is a part of word which can never have one silent vowel letter. Syllable is a part of a word which can also have a syllabic consonant. Syllable can be meaningful word by itself. What is the correct answer of 53? Correct answer will be B, that is syllable is a part of a word which can never have one silent vowel later. Got it. Next question we have is who said good prose is like a window pane? Who said good prose is like a window pane? Elders Huxley, George Orwell, E. M. Forster, Robert Lind. Correct answer is B, that is George Orwell. So George Orwell he is known for his works like Animal Farm, 1984. So please read his writings. Number 55, it says match the auto, uh, autobiographies in list 1 with their authors in list 2. Going home, Joseph Anton, Up from Slavery, Chronicles, Salman Nasdi, Booker T. Washington, Bob Dillon, Doris Lashing. Correct answer of 55 will be what? It is B. It means A4. Going home, Doris Lashing. So please uh, try to know about her work. B1, Joseph Anton, same, Salman Rasdi. C2, Up from Slash Slavery, Booker T. Washington. And then D3, Chronicles, Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan, you must have heard. Bob Dylan was an American songwriter, lyricist. He is known for his works right like tambourine man and then i have forgotten i have just heard so 
not so many very less song but his songs are very amazing so the correct answer will be b number 56 it says who and in which document sought to change the people of india in the following manner a class of persons indian in blood and color but english in taste in opinion in morals and in intellect who may be interpreters between us and the millions whom we govern so these lines are very important because this line is not a a uh, small line this line is said by a british person and it has had a long lasting impact in indian culture so who has said this line lord minto in the minto moral reforms 1909 lord cornavalis and the permanent settlement act 1793 lord macaulay and the minute on indian education 1835 the charles act on indian education 1813 so wow, what is the correct answer 56 correct answer is c that means lord macaulay and the minute on indian education this is the correct answer 57 this question is related to assertion and reason these kind of questions are asked pretty frequently so given below are two statements uh, statements one mark assertion and the other mark marked reason study them and choose the correct options below assertion a the essay is a literary form that is always subjective or personal r reason this is because it is not possible to develop an argument within such a brief space a is correct but r is incorrect a is incorrect but r, r is correct both n are correct both n are incorrect so find out correct what will be the correct answer correct answer is d both are incorrect both are wrong okay now let's move on number 58 it says which of the following characteristics is not true of the emerging mode of prose poetry which of the following characteristics is not true of the emerging mode of prose poetry it is written in paragraphs and not verses it uses images and figures of speech it uses rhythm but not rhyme it is expository and not emotive 58 number d is the correct answer it is expository and not emotive okay so this is not a characteristics related to emerging mode of prose poetry here is a statement followed by two assumptions with respect to the assumptions choose the correct options below statement an autobiography focuses on the sequence of events of the writer's life up to the point of writing while a memoir covers certain aspects of a writer's life so questions like this statement and assumption it also comes Fre- frequently it, it has been asked so you have to also solve many questions related to statement and assumption okay so we have read the statement now we will read the assumption it says number a uh, one the above statement suggests that an autobiography is chronologically ordered while a memoir is not ne- necessarily so the above state the above statement suggests that an autobiography is written in the first person while a memoir is written in the third person what is the correct option A, one is correct two is incorrect one is incorrect and two is correct both one and two are correct both one and two are incorrect so find out 59 correct answer is a that means one is correct okay but two is incorrect one is correct but two is in- incorrect so one uh, the above statement suggests that an autobiography chron- chronologically or ordered while a memoir is not necessarily so this is correct number 60 so here we have some of the opening lines from uh, bartol breaths the messing cough dialogues okay so this is a play if i'm not wrong so it says 
a stage on which the stage hand is slowly dismantling the set. An actor, a dramaturge, and a philosopher are sitting on chairs. The actor pours the wine into glasses and hands it round. The actor, all this dust makes it thirsty work sitting on a stage. You'd better take a good swig. Choose the correct options from the ones given below. The above passage is an example of di digesis, uh, or it is an example of mimesis, digesis, and mem it's a blend of digesis and mimesis. Or the above passage illustrates neither digesis nor mimesis. You tell me now, what is the correct answer of number sixty? Correct answer is C. That means the above passage is blend of digesis and mimesis. So both are. And it's a mixture of both. So now, uh, please try to know about it. What is digesis and what is mimesis? It's your duty if you want to qualify. Then we have number sixty-one. It says, "Which was the first book of essays to be published?" Bacon's essays, La Rochefoucauld maxims, Montaigne's essays. Pico della Mirandolas on the dignity of man. What is the correct answer? Sixty-one. Correct answer is C. Montaigne essays. Montaigne essays is the correct answer. Number sixty-two. We have it. Ask us which of the following is not a detective character. Which of the following is not a detective character? Questions like this also. Ask repeatedly, though different. Father Brown, Reginald Wexford, and Catrick, Mike Hooligan. Correct answer will be C. That is Anne Catrick. Anne Catrick is the correct answer. Match the author with their works. We have two. Two list: Chitra Banerjee, Diva Karoni, Bharati Mukherjee, Hari Kunjru, Sunitra Gupta. Memories of Rain, The Tree Bride, The Forest of Enchantment, Memory Palace. We have to now find out the correct answer of sixty-three. Correct answer is D. That means one tree. Uh, Chitra Banerjee, The Forest of Enchantment. Okay, two, two, two. Bharati Mukherjee, The Tree Bride, three, four. Hari Kunjru, Memory Palace, four one. Sunitra Gupta, Memories of Rain. Try to know about them too, because in future questions may come. No one knows. Number sixty four. It says it. It was said that Uncle Tom's Cabin. It was the book which started the Great War. If you have not read uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin, then you must do it. It was said that Uncle Tom's Cabin was the book which started the Great War. Which is the Great War referred to? The American War of Independence, the Spanish-American War, the American Civil War, the Mexican-American War. What is the correct answer? C is the correct answer. The American Civil War. So these all wars are important because many literary works are based on these wars. So please try to know about them too. Number sixty-five. It says the works of Franz Kafka. Franz Kafka. It's a very prominent name. If you have not heard, then you have to. So please go through his biography and works. Yeah, his famous works are like uh, *Metamorphosis* and then uh, *The Trial*. So it was written in which language? French, German, Czech, English. Correct answer is B. It's written in German lang language. Next question we have is which major English no novelist was not included by F. R. Lewis in his *The Great Tradition*? Which major English novelist was not included by F. R. Lewis in his *The Great Tradition*? Jane Austen, Joseph Conrad, Henry James, Charles Dickens. Sixty-six correct answer is Charles Dickens. Dickens. He was not. Included, he was a Victorian novelist, and he is known for his works like uh, *Pickwick Papers* and then *A Tale of Two Cities*, *Oliver Twist*, many more. 
okay then we have next question 67 it says Robinson Crusoe Robinson Crusoe was a famous novel uh, Robinson Crusoe the character lived in an uninhabited island for what 28 years 26 years 30 years 37 years so these kind of questions also ask be prepared 67 correct answer is a 28 years for 28 years the character Robinson Crusoe he lived in an un uninhabited island okay and he has also colonized many people there and uh, it is called that there was the first uh, colonization number 68 it says Eliza and Fraser uh, here, C 1798 to 1858, that might be timeline of birth and death. Was a Scottish woman who was aboard a ship that wrecked at an island off the coast of Queensland, Australia, on 22 May 1836, and who was taken by the Bajala or Butchila people, which novel by Patrick White adapts her story. So questions are uh, questions like this are also asked. Okay, uh, how a novel is written? What is the history of it? Who has inspired? Uh, whom he has or whom the author has dedicated? Or why this was written? These kind of things are important. These kind of things uh, we often overlook. Oh, but that thing we should also remember. That will help us in clearing nets. Sets or MA in English entrance test or PhD entrance test. Okay, so options are like this: uh, memoirs of many in one, a fringe of lips, eye of the storm, the aunt story. Sixty-eight. Correct answer is B. A fringe of lips. L e a b e s. The fringe of leaves. Sixty-nine. It says match the no novelist named in list one with their novels given in list two from the course given below, list 1 and list 2, Margaret Lawrence, Rohinton, Rohin, Rohinton Mystery, Margaret Atwood, Michael on, on that day, Cat's Eye, Cat's Eye, The Diviners, Warlight, such a long journey. So what will be the correct answer? B. A3, Margaret Lawrence, Warlight, B4, Rohinton Mystery, Such a Long Journey, C1, Margaret Atwood, Cat's Eye, D3, Michael Ondadze, The Diviners. So these all are important writers. You have to know about them. Then only it will be uh, easy for you to clear the exam. Number 70, it says, Peter carries Jack Max. Peter carries Jack's, Jack Max is a reworking of Deacon's great expectations, but Carey also reinvents Deacon's as a young writer called what? Henry Pips, Tobias Otts, Percy Buckle, Marcy Larkin. B. Tobias Otts. Peter Carey's Jack Max is a reworking of Deacon's great expectation, but Carey also reinvents Deacons as a young writer called Tobias Oates. Got it? Remember? Number 71, it says, which of the following cannot be called a Bildungsroman? Uh, Bildungsroman, this is a literary genre related to novel. So in uh, literary uh, writing, there are so many genres, like for novel, poem, drama, autobiography there there will be numerous uh, genre therefore you have to know about them too how will you know you just type list of literary genres related to novel drama like that then you will get to know and when you will read a poem read a novel read a drama always try to know in which genre that particular novel or literary writing is composed options are charles dickens david copperfield henry fielding's tom james jam joyce a portrait of the artist as a young man daniel defoe's robinson crusoe 
D is the correct answer. Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe. So uh, this cannot be called a Bildung's Roman. Uh, in general, uh, in uh, Bildung's Roman, from uh, from a child to his adulthood or uh, old age, a character's development and journey has been described. Okay. So in in that case, like Jen Eyre, it can be called as Bill Bill Dance Roman if I'm not wrong. So you have to find out about that. Next question we have is the Africans in Heart of Darkness. Uh, so African in Heart Heart of Darkness are viewed as what? They are seen as servile black men. They are viewed as enemies. They are presented as rebels by cards. Soon the enemies become criminals in the eyes of the whites. Okay, uh, and we have to now give the right sequence of these statements as they appear in the novel. A B C D B A D C A B D C C A B D. What will be the correct one? Seventy-two. Correct answer will be C. That means A B D C. A B D C. First, A will come. Uh, D will come B C okay A B D C hmm next question is uh, match the following books in list one with their settings in list two we have two lists list one and list two in this one we have uh, novel and in list two we have place name means uh, a a particular novel is based in which location that we have to find out so when you read a novel or drama you should also focus on that in which location that is based or set christopher uh, isner woods mr norris changes trains this is uh, also a famous work you have to know evelyn walks by boris george orwell's the road to wigan pier graham greens the heart of the matter then options are like this in list two means location names are lancashire and yorkshire berlin london and sierra leone these are the options correct option will be c that means uh, a2 christopher isner woods mr norris changes trains this is uh, 73 right uh, c a2 berlin so this is based in berlin uh, b3 evelyn walks while bodies london so this is based in london c1 uh, george orwell's the road to wigan pier it is based in Lan lancashire and yorkshire graham greens the heart of the matter it is uh, related to Four, Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone or what? Like this. Next question, seventy-four. It says, "The then I notice a small sketch in oils, on a panel, representing a woman, draped and blindfolded, carrying a lighted torch. The passage occurs in which of the following novels? Nostromo. If you don't know." Note it down and go through it. Lord Jim, Heart of Darkness, Victory. From where this passage is taken or it occurs. Correct answer is C. That means Heart of Darkness. So many questions are asked related to Heart of Darkness. You have to know about them too. 75. It says, uh, Why were Scott's novels called Waverly novels? Okay. Why were Scott's novels were called Waverly novels? Because most of them were set in the re re reason called Waverly, because they were named after Waverly, the first of the series of historical novels that Scott wrote, because they were later named after we Waverly, the last of the historical novels that Scott wrote, because the protagonists are wavering between different decisions. What is the correct answer? B is the correct answer. Because they were named after Waverly, 
the first of the series of historical novels that Scott wrote. This is the correct answer. Number 76, it's a very long paragraph, but let us read it. Uh, Sir Thomas Bartram uh, tries his best to keep the distinction between himself and, and his children on the one hand and his poor relative Fanny on the other. He says to Mrs. Norris, there will be some difficulty in our way to the distinction proper to be made between the two girls as they grow up. How to preserve in the minds of my daughters the consciousness of what they are and how without depressing her spreads too far to make her remember that she is not a Miss Bertram. Their rank, fortune, rights and expectations will always be different. Austin demonstrates the complexity of Sir Thomas Bertram, which of his characteristics is not depicted in the list below. Class consciousness, sympathy for Fanny, sense of decorum, misogyny. So these kind of questions are also asked. Please be careful. 76 answer will be D that is sense of decorum it is the correct answer sense of decorum okay uh, let's move on to number 77 it says uh, in T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland so many questions are asked related to wasteland please go through it in T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland the line the dot dot death Shakespearean rag reg is what taken from a popular song by Zen Book and Herman Ruhi, 1912, taken from Tristan Sandy, taken from Shakespeare and Shakespeare Our Contemporary by Jane Cott, taken from a Harvard University production of Shakespeare's King Lear, from where it is taken. It is A, taken from a popular song by Jane Buck and Herman Ruhi in 1912. Pelgrave's Golden Treasury was published in the year 1861, 1867, 1865, 1869. What is the correct answer? Correct answer is A, that is 1861. In this year, uh, Pelgrave's Golden Treasury was published. 79, it says, I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness, starving, hysterical naked. Choose the correct option from the ones given below to explain the phrase starving hysterical naked. So we have to find out the phrase that explain it. The best minds were mad and hungry. The best minds were lacking in proper ideology and conviction. The best minds were unemployed and poverty stricken. Most of the best minds were passionate to the point of hysteria. What is the correct answer? 79. Correct answer B that is the best minds were lacking in proper ideology and conviction. Number 80, it says the first poet to have evolved the sonnet form is who? Giacomo da Lentini, Dante Alighieri, Guitoni de Arezzo, Guido Cavalcanti. So these names are tough for pronunciation for me, not for you maybe, but for me. And if I have pronounced wrong, I am sorry for that. I will try to improve 80 correct answer will be number a Giacomo da Lentini I think he was Italian if I'm not wrong please very very fight 81 it says as one a man has been is poor estate and climb up and wax fortune and there a bit in prosperity this lines from Chaucer's non priest tale bears the influence of what Horace Ars Poetica, Josephus Jewish Antiquities, Boethius De Consolo De Consolatione Philosophy, Strabo's Geographica. So correct answer will be uh, C. That is taken from uh, not taken, but uh, this line uh, are influenced by Boethius. The con consola tione philosophy. Okay, okay. Next question we have is eighty two. 
it says which of the following characters has no mention in milton's paradise lost i think you have read paradise lost uh, it has first 10 books then it 12 books total 12 12 books you must know each books each character each plot okay so which of the following character characters has no mention in milton's paradise lost in book 1 mammon gabriel camos moloch so i think uh, gabriel let us find out yes gabriel is the correct answer it was not mentioned others character uh, other characters like uh, mammon camos moloch these are uh, mentioned and depicted elucidated there it did treat says match the cities in list 1 with the lines from the poems describing this series in list 2 okay we have to match the cities in list 1 with the lines from the poems describing the cities in these cities in list 2 so in list 1 we have eliot's london yet's byzantium plats san francisco azras paris then these are the lines so let's try to find out the correct answer of it the correct answer will be c that means uh, a to a to eliot's london i think we are in red's alley where the dead men lost their bones got it and then uh, b1 yet's byzantium it is related to the young in one another's arms bird in the trees those dying generations so you have to also remember poetic lines okay and if not lines then you must know that this line is taken from this poem uh, for that you have to do your excessive study then only you will get to know line by line study okay then we have number c c4 plats san francisco is related to ghastly statue with one great toe big as a frisco seal then d3 as azra pounds paris the apparition of these faces in the crowd p uh, paddles on a wet black bow so these all are writer all poem are very very important so c is the correct answer number 84 it says who among the following wrote a poem giving the same title as john don did a benediction forbidding morning okay uh, similarly john don means likes john don um, one of the poems or oh, sorry one of the poets has also written a poem title a benediction forbidding morning this is uh, a metaphysical poem so who was that poem uh, adrini rich dylan thomas sylvia platt Sonia Sanchez. Yeah, Andre Andre Nerich. This this is the correct answer. Okay, so she has written a poem title "A Benediction Forbidden Mo- Mo- Morning," just like John Donne. Eighty-five. We have. It's a long question. It says, "Thou was not born for that, immortal bird." no hungry generations tread the down the voice i heard this passing right was heard in a- ancient days by emperor and clown in what sense is the bird immortal given below are four statements choose the correct an- answers so so many options are given i will not read all the lines uh, but if you want to read then i you can do it okay you just pause it pause the video and then you can take skins or or just read this is the a option this is the b option this is the c option this is the d option a is correct b is correct c is correct c and d are correct so i will tell you the correct answer the correct answer of 85 is d that means c and d are correct all are wrong c and d are correct okay c and d if the voice in the third line stands for the night nightingale song and change from age to age contrast us with the tran- transient passing night then it is immortal and then d the bird is immortal in the sense that it its song has been bringing joy to human beings uh, here 
B double E it's a spelling error or printing error through the ages next question 86 it says in the first canto of Homer's Iliad Agamemnon Agamemnon is a famous character of this epic poem you must know about him in the first canto of Homer's Iliad Agamemnon declined to free the daughter of crisis who afterwards invoked the god for revenge who is the god and does he fulfill uh, cyrus or crisis maybe crisis crisis prayer sorry for the pronunciation okay crisis prayer 86 c is the correct answer apollo saw his arrows uh, crisis he was a devotee of apollo god Okay. At the seven, it says, the first canto of Virgil's Aeneid. It begins with a great storm that destroys the fleet of Aeneas, but later the storm calms down. This natural event has been presented in terms of the battle of gods. Who are the gods involved? It's a bit long question. Let me repeat it. It says the first canto of Virgil's Aeneid begins with a great storm that destroys the fleet of Aeneas, but later the storm calms down. This natural event has been pre presented in terms of the battle of gods. Who are the gods involved? So many names are given. I will tell you directly the correct answer that is Juno, Aeolus, and Neptune. Juno, Aeolus, and Neptune. Okay, then we have next question. It says, a bright reply to wisdom. Wisdom's occult plane, a calm illuminator and flame. A bright reply to wisdom's occult plane, a calm illuminator and flame. These, the lines are from which poem? Sarojini Naidu's The Gift of India, Torudot's Lakshman, Sri Aurobindo's The Golden Light, Kamala Das, Bhanshyam. So, while you read about English literature, do not forget to read the history and writings related to Indian English literature, okay? And also Northeast Indian English literature. So what is the correct answer? Correct answer will be C, that is Sri Aurobindo's The Golden Light. Sri Aurobindo is a notable uh, person. You have to know his work, his bio biography, okay? Next question we have is 89. It says, the Australian-born classical scholar Gilbert Murray. The Australian-born classical scholar Gilbert Murray is the original of source what? March banks in Candida, uh, Cuisines in Major Bar Barbara, Professor Higgins in Pygmalion, Dubdet in Doctor's Dilemma. What is the correct answer? Correct answer is number B. That means cuisines in Major Bar Barbara. Uh, that's it for right now. Uh, till our next video, I have stopped uh, till 89. We'll come back soon. And till then, do your best. Okay? And please be sure, whatever you have read, that will never come. But with your intelligent guess, with your connecting the dots you have to find out the correct answer got it that's why you have to read okay read a lot but also solve a, solve questions a lot that is the motto thank you